Mathematics is about rigor. It always was. You can't lie, you can't make mistakes, and you definitely can't make stuff up. Unless you're this guy from 1545, but that's for later in the video. I'll start off with a question, as I always do. We have a quadratic equation of x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. Find x. Then using the same x, evaluate x to the 2015 minus x to the 2014. This has a solution, but this doesn't. How is that even possible? Well, I should rephrase it, it has no real solution. And some of you may be asking, isn't that the same thing? Shouldn't everything be real? I mean, the definition claims that if it isn't, it would be non-existent. Well, in this plane. It exists elsewhere, on a plane perpendicular to our number line. These are the imaginary numbers. If something isn't real, then what exactly is it? Well, it's imaginary. Yeah, I know, creative naming, right? Anyways, if you square a positive number, it gives a positive result, and if you square a negative number, it gives the same positive result. It's why we have the plus or minus symbol for quadratics, and it's also why we don't have such things as the square root of negative numbers. It doesn't exist. It just simply isn't possible. But that's not satisfactory. The next step is the source of a lot of memes and surface level absurdity. Mathematicians just made it up. Yeah, nothing else, they just made up a constant denoted by the letter i standing for imaginary, which when squared gives a value of negative 1. I oversimplified a lot of things here, but the origin of the imaginary unit actually lies in the cubic formula, rather than just thinking of square roots and making it up. But for the sake of this video, that doesn't matter. If you want a deeper dive into the origin of this mysterious unit, however, then I would highly recommend Veritasium's video, The Epic Maths Jewel. If you're still here though, then I'll get back to the question. x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. When I saw this question, I immediately jumped to my trusty quadratic factorization, the superior way of solving a quadratic equation. Though I quickly realized that I couldn't split this middle term properly. The reason is because the equation completely misses the x-axis, meaning it has no solution. Its discriminant, or this part of the quadratic formula, is negative, which means its square root is undefined. But equipped with our new imaginary unit, we can give this a defined value of the square root of 3 multiplied by i. This is cool and all, but it generally feels like we just made something up and still found nothing. Well, that's where the next step comes in. Remember when I said that the imaginary numbers exist perpendicular to the real axis? Well, we can use this to establish a couple of axioms. Firstly, multiplication by i results in a rotation of 90 degrees anti-clockwise, meaning that the powers of i, unlike real numbers, can be cyclic, changing from 1 to i to negative 1 to negative i, and all the way back to 1. Secondly, we can use some basic differential equations to derive a wonderful expression, one that you likely already know if not at least heard of. Euler's formula. Also occasionally written like this, the equation states that e to the i t leads to a value of a point rotated anti-clockwise t degrees with a radius of 1. Anyways, why does this matter? Well, the previous solutions given to the quadratic equation were actually clear defined values of sine and cos. Not only that, but also values tied to a common angle and radius of 1. Perfect for Euler's formula. In order to identify what angle that is, however, we need to simulate two different scenarios. After all, the quadratic equation consisted of two different answers. We can rewrite the addition of the sine and cosines using our previously established Euler's formula and end up with two different powers of e. If you're confused by what it means to have an imaginary power, then you have every right to be. 
Fractional powers already seemed impractical, let alone this. Imaginary numbers don't really exist in the first place, which is why it can be difficult, or rather impossible, to properly interpret them as exponents. Just know that right now we use the loophole in derivatives in order to give it a definition. Either way, we rearrange the complicated quadratic formula solutions into a simpler single term expression. Using some basic algebra, we can find from the given equation that x squared equals x minus 1, which can be substituted into x to the 2015 minus x to the 2014, giving us x to the 2014 multiplied by x minus 1, or rather x to the 2016. All we have to do afterwards is to substitute x for e to the pi divided by 3 multiplied by i, which simplifies to e to the i multiplied by 672 pi. Let's go back to the definition of Euler's formula and try to evaluate this. We know that in radians, 2 pi is a full rotation, thus any multiple of 2 pi is simply just adding another rotation onto it. Even at the point of 672 pi, it's still just 336 rotations around the unit circle. In the end, it rotates all the way back to 0 degrees, or just 1. If we insert the other possibility of e to the 11 pi divided by 3 multiplied by i, it still gives 1, just with more rotations to get there. So, to answer the question, it's 1. Yeah, just one. Though I think it goes without saying that despite having such a common number as the answer, the process quite literally used numbers that we can't comprehend. If imaginary numbers were a new concept to you, then don't worry, you'll get used to it. They have one of the simplest definitions, the square root of negatives. Though in nature, they are definitely complex.